Plus Tube friends. Hope you're all well. Um, so I've had a few requests um, in the past about um, the fact that I do the heaven and earth designs, the full coverage, how I do them. Um, and people have messaged me and sort of said, well, you know, how do you, and I always say, well, I use GoodNotes, a good, GoodNotes app um, to do my stitching with. And they're like, oh, I don't know really how to use it. I'm not very good at using apps. So I decided that I'd sort of combine two things at the same time as best I could. So some people have been asking me how I stitch my heads. Um, more, more so for the people that are, have never done one before. So this is definitely, definitely not the video for people that have done a haid before. Unless, of course, you're interested in how you work using the GoodNotes app whilst doing the haid. So doing it on a PDF reader rather than on a paper chart. Um, so there's a bit of me stitching um, and there's a bit of me doing GoodNotes app so that you can see how I combine the two and how I stitch and mark the chart. Um, so yeah, so just a little, a little snippet of how I do what I do. Um, it's not, you know, no one is right or wrong in how they do it. Um, the way I learned to do it was through floss tube. What would we do without floss tube? Um, for those that have been with me from the beginning, you know that I, I'd never stitched before I'd watched floss tube. So everything that I've learned has been from floss tube. Um, but what I did, there, there was no one person's method worked for me. So let's just get that clear. Everyone has their own working style. They have their own way that they can do things, the way that their brain, you know, what clicks, what makes sense for one person isn't necessarily what clicks and what makes sense for somebody else. So for me, I took snippets of how other people did theirs and sort of adapted. So I adapted it for how I, how I could get my head around it. So what worked for me. Um, so you know that there's plenty of YouTube videos out there about how people do use the parking method. If you watch them, they all slightly vary um, one way or another. Um, and no doubt, mine will vary in comparison to anybody else's. So it's a case of taking bits and pieces from everyone's way of doing it, everyone's method, and then adapting it so that it makes sense to you when you're stitching. That's the only way I can sort of describe it. I, I could never have picked up the parking method just using somebody else's method and try and roll with it because it didn't necessarily always make sense. So this is my method. Um, it's my method of stitching them. It's my method of how I use the GoodNotes app. So again, you know, I'm not a, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, so sit back, relax, have a cup of tea or coffee, um, and let's get started. Okay, so I always use the GoodNote app, uh, the GoodNote app um, for all of my full coverage heaven and earth designs sometimes if it's a really big chart the mirabilias i like it because i can i can expand it and blow it up and it's much easier to mark and unmark which in my case i need because i'm forever making mistakes um that said not so much with the um heaven and earth because i wouldn't undo the heaven and earth if i made a mistake because you can't see it so but for the purposes of this video, I need to show you how I use the app so that I can show you how I incorporate it into how I stitch a haid. Um, so down here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see um, an app with some lines on it and a pencil. That is the GoodNote app. So we click on that and that brings us into our category screen. Um, up here on the top right hand corner, you go into categories, you can create your own folders. As you can see, there's one there that says cross stitch charts. That's predominantly where I hold all of my charts, but for the purposes of this video, um, I don't want you to, you know, see all of those. So I've basically gone in and just moved some to what is known as demo. So I've folded it. The one we're going to be working on in the video for the how I stitch, um, I'm going to use my alternative reality 
so it makes sense that we go into the alternative reality um, chart to show you how this works. I have spoken with Michelle Sayer at Heaven and Earth Designs and she did say that it was fine for me to use um, a portion of the chart to show you how I do what I do. Um, so of course you're not going to see the whole chart and if you think you could stitch a haid from a tiny bit of the chart that I'm about to show you, you are sorely mistaken. So the chart we're going to use is the Heaven and Earth Design chart that I'm going to stitch in this video to show you how I do my uh, my full coverage stitching uh, with, the, with the parking method. Um, so because of that we'll use the chart that we're going to stitch which is Alternative Reality by Heaven and Earth Design. So when you first click on it, it brings you into um, the pages. You'll notice across the top here, there's a number of different things. So you've got a back arrow. With the back arrow, all that does is just keeps taking you back. Then next to that, you have the four little squares up here in the top corner. That will show you all of your pages broke down individually. So if we click on that, which I'm finding really difficult to do without putting my fingers in it. Okay, there we go. Um, that allows you then to just scroll through to find the page that you're looking for. And then you can select the page that you're looking for. Honestly, I don't use the next three buttons. You could do the first one is basically add an image text box import a page add a page um, the next one is creating shapes and the next one is basically um, one where it'll actually select a portion of the so if I go like that it basically selects it blows up a certain portion which You'd think that doing what we do, that that would help. Um, you'll see what I mean in a minute. I don't use it. Um, the other thing you'll notice is as you as you click things along the top, they turn blue. Well, when they're blue, that basically means you've selected something. So if you want to unselect something, you just click on it again and it unselects it. So if we unselect that, it will disappear. So anything that stays in the same colour as the actual bar itself is unselected. The buttons or the, the, the functionality that I use this predominantly for is this section here. So you'll see at the moment that this one is selected. That's actually a fountain pen. Um, and you can customise the size of the dot or the size of the line that you do. You can select the colour. So if we do it as its biggest, you click off of it and then you mark it. Um, I personally don't use fountain pen because it actually covers over. So if I show you, you can't see through that. It's basically covering over. Um, the next one along is your highlighter. That is predominantly the one that I work with. Um, and then next to that, you have this one, which looks like a rubber, which is exactly that. So if you select the rubber again, the little icon will turn dark blue. When it turns dark blue, you know it's selected. And then you can just rubber back out again. Again, the next one, I don't use that. The next one to that is actually very, very handy. And this is, this is one that you need to know about as well. So it looks like a circle with a pencil struck out. If you select it and it turns blue, it allows you to move around on the page. You'll notice that with this you can blow it up and you can make it smaller. Um, so yeah, so the only real, well, actually that's not strictly true. So if I select my fountain pen again and I go like this and I do squiggles in different places, you have the option of clicking on the rubber and rubbering out what you've just done and selecting the areas you want to rubber out or over here on the right hand side you'll see there's a back arrow. If you click that back arrow it will back out, it will basically delete backwards bit by bit the last bits that you've done in the order that you've done. So you have that option as well. Um, I personally tend to stick with the rubber but you do have the back action if, if you've made like multiple errors and you can't remember where they are. 
Okay, so let's go to the actual chart where we want to mark so that you can actually see how this works. So we go back over to our pages. Now I'm going to pick a page that I'm not actually working on. So let's say this page here. Right. And then if you do the selector tool at the top, it allows you to blow your chart up to a rather large size, which is what I need for my eyes to stitch. Um, so the way this works, so say for instance, um, I decide I'm going to stitch these squares with the with the lines through, um, and I've stitched them, and I'm I'm ready to move on. So all the time that this is marked as blue over here, your selector tool, it won't let you mark anything. What it's going to do is it's selecting the page and it's moving the page around for you. Okay. So you have to select what it is you want. So obviously, I like I say, I always use the highlighter. So I click on my highlighter. If you click it again, you get this box. Well, this box basically just shows me all the colours that I've pre-decided on. It gives you the option of how bigger, you know, how big you want the mark to be. I always stick with the little one. Currently, it's darker on presence. That's the one that is currently set to. You can go to custom. Oh, there we go. And again, you can select your colour that you want. You can select the size of the, the mark that you're going to put. So it's, it's very, very easy for you to change things up. So for this purpose, I always, well, you'll see from my chart. So I always use the pink for my stitched stitches. And the blue is what I use when I'm going to park a thread and how I mark to park the thread. So if we go back to pink... So I've stitched all of the squares with the lines in. So all I do, oh, is mark. And you can do it in lines. You can put a dot on them. Line, line. So it's no different to highlighting with an actual highlighter. Right. So they're the stitches that I've stitched. Now I want to go to my selector tool because I want to shuffle down a little bit. This is how easy it is. Now, obviously I've stitched these. Now, because I use the parking method, I'm going to now park my stitch down here, ready to go. So to mark that I've parked, very important for me, I change my highlighter to blue. You'll notice that when you click on your highlighter and you're changing between colours, it will show you what colour it's actually set to, just underneath the pen, underneath the highlighter image. So again, if I change it to blue, you'll see that under there turns blue. The fact that the highlighter is highlighted blue, the actual icon has turned blue, tells me it's selected. So I already know that that's selected. So now I'm going to park my thread. So I highlight it in blue. Okay. So now I want to go back up a little bit. So I press my selector tool. Again, it turns dark blue. So that's what's selected. I scroll it down. Say, for instance, now we're going to stitch, mm, what are we going to stitch next? Um, let's say we're going to stitch these little three round weird squares. Now, at the moment, the highlighter is highlighted with blue colour underneath, which is my parking colour, and it's not selected. So we need to select it first, which will make it turn blue. We select it again, and I want to change my colour because it's I've stitched these. And then I'm going to mark out and highlight what I've stitched. Okay, so now I'm going to park my thread again down here. This is the next one. So I'll go back up to my highlighter. I'll turn in blue, and then I'll mark my thread. Parked. So there you go. That's a rough idea of how I use this tool. It's very very easy. If at any time I've stitched something and it's wrong or I, I park something and it's wrong it's easy enough to rub out um, and if I accidentally mark off the wrong thing that I was stitching if I was really well that's not likely to happen is it but it, just in case so if at any time you need to take anything out or rubber it out like I say you've got the back button but the back button is only going to delete back off point by point what you did but it could have been something that you done three steps ago this is where your rubber comes in handy. So I select the rubber, so the rubber is now turned blue. Say for instance, I didn't stitch 
these and I stitched the number twos instead. Just so I didn't stitch the squares with the lines in. And that I was just having a bit of a mini meltdown. So I want to basically unhighlight and undo everything I did in those squares. So there we go. And we unhighlight that. So then I did actually stitch the blues. Uh, the twos, sorry. So again, we change the highlighter because it's still blue. We change it back to pink. And we mark off our number twos. And then to, because obviously I always blow my chart up this big so I can see really close, I want to go find where the next two is so that I can mark it off as a parked thread. So as you can see, there's a number two down here in the bottom right hand corner. That looks to be the closest one. Again, the selector tool is selected. I don't want that. I want to select my highlighting colour. So I go to my highlighter, which currently is showing as pink. I want to click it again. It will turn blue. And then I'll mark the number two. It's as simple as that. And that's how I use the Good Notes app for my, my marking off of the chart. Super easy. Um, it works for me. And like I say, anything you've selected, if you're unsure when you're looking at your at your app, what is selected, it tells you. It'll turn blue at the top. So if I unselect, so the rubber again, anything that you, you, you click on it twice, if it's got a functionality that you can change, it will give you that option. I always keep mine set to the smaller one. Obviously, I didn't stitch any of this, so I'm going to need to rubber him out. So literally... Rubber it all out. Press the selector. Rubber out the number two. Press the selector. We're back to a blank page. So that's just a brief overview of how the Good Notes app works, how it works for me, um, and how I incorporate it into my stitching. Um, so now we'll whiz over to the stitching. So. Obviously, you can understand why I'm trying to show you the Good Notes app separately to the stitching because there is no way for me to show you how I mark the chart physically and stitch at the same time. You can't, I can't have both showing completely at the same time. So this was the only way for me to show you how I do the marking um, on the Good Notes app. And like I say, if you need to go back on the page, you literally go back to the beginning if you want to see other pages, you click on your pages and you can scroll up and down. So if you need to get to a page. If you've got it rather large, like I do, where I keep my image, the, the, the symbols very large. If you get to a page and you're like, well, I can't see anything like that because I've just changed the page. And now look at it because I'm, I'm not on a marking page. I'm on a thread page. Literally, it's the same as anything else. You just shrink it back down using your finger and your the same as you would on an iPad if you or on an iPad or if you want to try and blow something up. You literally finger one side, finger the other side, and just push and hold and squeeze outwards. And then to make it smaller, push and hold and squeeze inwards. And there you go. So around now you should be seeing my stitching. Um, I've had to precariously um, sort of place this so that you could actually see what I'm doing. Um, so this is basically to show you how I do mine. Um, everyone's is different. Everyone has a different way of doing stuff. Um, this is going to be a little bit tricky because I've actually got a camera that's right in my way to be able to show you this. Um, so you have to excuse the hands and the fingers. So in the top you'll see um, a screen of my um, iPad which is the 10 by 10 square that I'm going to be working on um, and here in the main video you can see all of my parked threads that are sitting here waiting to be stitched. Um, I know there's holes el elsewhere like up here where you can see their spaces. I've just basically gone to this so that I could show you how I do it. Um, so first of all I always clear and take out and basically stitch up everything that's parked. 
Um, and you'll see, obviously, I've got my park threads supposedly marked on my chart. We'll see how accurate they are shortly. So, first of all, we'll go to stitch number one, which is the top left-hand corner, which is the the up arrow. This is being stitched one over one on 25 count. So it's super, super small. She says, trying to thread the needle. I'd normally lick it, but I can't get to it to lick it. So this is technical. Um, there is no right or wrong way in doing your stitching, and certainly not with parking. Um, I found that by using different methods from other people is how I actually came up with my own my own version of it. Um, you know, you can complicate it or you can simplify it. So, okay, so here we go. We're all threaded up and ready to go. So let's try and do this without getting my hands in the way. Okay, so let's move those out of the way. So we've got one. Whoopsie, moving two. There's three in a line. So I'll go back and stitch the second half of the leg. I always stitch bottom left to top right and then bottom right to top left. God, this is difficult to do this whilst I'm looking this way. Okay. So there's my first three, um, and then we've got another three going over here. Move these threads. Two. I don't know about you, but you always end up counting when you do this. So I'll go along and I'll stitch everything that I sort of see to remember. And I tend to find that I go for the open spaces first, if there are any. And then what I do is to just see where I'm at, so I'll go up to my iPad and I'll start marking now. So I'll be one, two, three, done those, one, two, three, done those, and I've done that. And then I'll move these threads out of the way. So it's out of the way. I need to get in between them. Mm. No, I don't. I'm go there. So I'm um, move those out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's them. Move this thread out of the way. And then we've got, right, so that one's parked there, so then that's the next squares. So we've got two over here. There's one. And two. Let's move that up a bit. And then the second leg. One. Two. 
two. So then I'll mark again on the chart. Okay, so we've done those, we've done those. So then we know we need to come down. And then where have we got? So one. So the one above where we've got one parked. This is the method to my madness. This is actually really a short thread for me to be doing this on, but we'll do it anyway. So again, starting in my usual place, bottom left of each corner, coming up, bottom right, and finishing the legs on the top leg of each stitch. There's another two, there's a space between, and then another two over here. And then we'll mark those as stitched. That one, that one. Oh, come on. And then we've got two over here. Thread's getting very tinsy. And then there's one final one down here. I know this is the bottom of my 10 by 10. I've got, I'm supposed to have a part thread in there. One, two, three. Two, three. Hmm. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and we want number eight. There we go. Now I normally finish my part or finish my threads on the back, but because I'm videoing this, I'm just going to stick that tail down there out of the way. Okay, so then. That's all of those stitched. So I'll just go in and finish marking off. Nothing to park. Perfect. Right. Let's find something that we're going to park. So let's try the square. So this one over here. So there's only actually one to stitch. And then we're going to park it. Oh, sorry, just jog the camera. And by having the park threads marked, it tells me that there should always be a thread sitting in that hole waiting for me. So, here we go. So, we're going to do the big black square that's marked on the chart. We're going to stitch him. And he's a bit of a loner because he's there all on his own. Okay, so we've stitched him. So we mark him on our chart and turn him pink and go straight over that. Now we need to park him. And obviously we're looking to park him just here. That's where I'm going to park him. Right there. So... Literally, that's 
number one. We know it's the one underneath that. And I park him in my bottom corner. So where, where, wherever his start point is, is where I park him so that he's ready in his set spot to go. And then we go and mark that one as a parked thread. So we go to our pencil, we turn in blue and we mark him. And then we hit the select and we go back up to select our next stitch. So if we do, what should we do next? Should we do the hearts? So we get our thread again. This is a short thread for my liking, but for the purpose of the video, I'll just roll with it. Okay. So this is the hearts. Now I can't see where I am. Can't even see in this. Where am I? There I am. Okay, so that's two hearts there. Move my threads out of the way. So that's a park thread. And then we're going to do three in a row here. One. There's two. There's three. Go back and do a top stitches, my top legs. Come on, where are you? There you are. That's three. And then we want to do... Is it there? Yep. One. Two. I mean, this is me. This is me being random. I mean, I, I could go and do that third one that's over to the left and down one, but... There's two. There's one down here. Any more? Yes. So we're going to move those out of the way. We're going to stitch these three here. One. There's two. There's three. Do the top stitches. One. Two, missed it. And three. And then we need to go find a place to park him, if there is one. So we go back into our chart, change the highlighter back to pink to mark it off as stitched. Super easy. And then press the select. Move on up, okay, and then we find this stitch, which is already stitched, and we've got a funny looking one, and then the heart goes in there, like so, parked. Let's move that up a little bit for you, all parked. 
Okay, so I'm going to finish stitching the rest of the ones that are actually in this square and then come back and show you um, when I start my own threads. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so here we are again. Um, as you can see, I've completed all of the um, all of the part threads. Oops, sorry, I'm moving that. So now we are moving on to the um, the spaces that are left, and putting in the new threads. I'm sorry if you can hear my tummy rumbling. I'm really, really hungry now. I want to get this square finished so that I can go and eat something nice and yummy on my Sunday lunchtime. Okay, so I actually start my threads are probably a lot different to a lot of other people. I've never actually seen anyone do it the same way as me, so um, but I've never had any threads fall out or anything along that line, so. I'll continue doing it until until something was to change, which I don't think it will. So basically, when I start my thread, so we'll go, we're going to go into this top corner up here. Um, so obviously, I would normally stitch from bottom left to top right, and then bottom right to top left. So to start my single thread. I go in from the front in the top right hand corner and bring my thread down. Now, I now bring my thread back up through my start corner which is my bottom left and then I gently, very gently, pull the thread until I see it start to move. And then once I feel the resistance and it starts to move, I pull it so that it's sort of, I mean, it's still there. You can just sort of see the towel sticking out. I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to just see the towel. So then what I do is I sort of catch that and then I go back down through the hole. Now, I'm very gentle when I go back down through the hole. Only enough until I feel small amount of resistance and it's laying flat. And then I come up in my bottom right hole and again no major tug just enough that I can feel the tension and then I go back down to complete the stitch. Now I tug and you can see that's bouncing up and down and that's not going anywhere. And that's how I anchor my thread. So that's how I do my start from the front. And if it's wrong, well, I don't think there's a wrong. It anchors, that's all I need to know. It never goes anywhere. I've never had one come out. It does the job. It saves a whole lot of hassle, keep turning my project over for a single thread. And obviously, that's my version of a pin stitch in a one over one on 25 count. So then I continue stitching, Ooh, she says, until she gets a knot. Oh, come on, really? You're going to do this on live camera? Oh, oh dear. Hold that thought, people. Okay, right, we need another needle. We need to fix my little knot. So this is how, it would, look, live video footage of Teresa and her knot. So, how I get this little knot out of my... So, I stick my needle in the knot, like so. And then I start to tug on one of the strings. One of the strings is the reason that I've got the knot. 
and when it's the right one that you're pulling on see if I try to pull on the wrong one the knot doesn't move but when I pull on the other one the knot slides right up don't know if you can see this come on camera focus no there you go the knot comes right up to the top of the needle so that it it up against the needle then I slide my needle off give it another tug don't know if I can do it there you go and out comes the knot so there you go that's how I get a knot out of my uh, I don't know if everyone else does that but there you go I've just shared something with you that happens randomly even with the single thread that normally works with two threads as well. Okay, so we've done that one. And then we're coming over here. Do this one. Do these three. Um, so I'm working on the twos on the chart at the minute. Two. Oh, that one didn't go in very well, did he? just jog the camera I'm sorry people if I'm making shake wreck and roll it's a good job you didn't see the video that I tried to do earlier on this morning because I think you all would have been sick it was that it just it just wouldn't stay still hence the reason why I'm now doing it the way I'm doing it which is balanced off my own table okay two 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 and two what else have we got these are two and these ones two more I hope my hands aren't in the way Okay, so there's all the twos done. Um, now we can park the thread. So, not that one. That one. So now my thread is parked. Go and mark my chart. So it's already selected pink. So I'm going to mark that one, that one, that one, those, those. Move the chart down and turn that one blue for parked. So now we're on the percent. Okay, get a new thread. So, like I said, this, this is the way I stitch. I think everyone has their own way and their own style. And sometimes it's a mixture when you when you when you're still learning. I mean, obviously, I learned to park from floss tube, where I basically went and watched how other people did it, tried their way, and then came up with my own version from that. Okay, so again, how I start my thread: top right hand corner, I come up into my start point. Give the thread a little tug, nothing too amazing. Bring it down so it's almost in line with the stitches. Gently pull through. A little bit of tension there. Come up in my returning hole. Give it a little tug, again, just to feel resistance. And then bring my needle back down. And then I can tug it. 
to my heart's content. So there we go, one anchored thread and stitch number one done, all in the same. Okay. That's how I do mine. Wrong or right, it works for me. Nothing's ever unraveled, she says. <laughs> it hasn't, I can assure you. And then one down here. And then we're going to go and see if there's anywhere to park. Sounds like we're at the supermarket. Okay, we've marked the chart. Turn those pink. And that one pink. Change the selector tool. Any percentages? Um, oh, we haven't got a percent in here, but I have got two there. So I will actually park over to the right hand side now so as not to be wasteful so if you look on the chart that's the one and that one there so I will park that over there I will only park over to the right or the left if there's nowhere for it to go directly underneath and I've checked to make sure that there isn't a park thread sort of waiting in the wings of the one above okay so we've got two more to do and then we are done. Okay, I'm going to move you over slightly. So there we go. Um, 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 next. You just hate it when you're looking for a colour and you can't find it on your Paco thread organiser. Can you hear my tummy? So hungry. Okay, so next thread. I can't even imagine what it must be like to do a heaven and earth chart on paper. I would go so wrong and I would be forever having all different coloured marks. Okay, so here we go again. So starting a new thread, top right hand corner. Bring the thread down. I don't, I normally leave like a longer towel until I've got my other thread in or my other, the needle in my start point. Don't know why, but it brings the towel down better. So then we bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, in line with the stitching almost. So it's just sort of sitting there. You can just sort of see that still. And then sticking with the needle, a little bit of resistance. And again, just feeling slowly for the resistance and then popping back down, give them a good tug. There you go, one anchor thread. And then we finish the stitch. Like so. Okay, anywhere to park? Mark that one off, that's done. Uh, no. No. Okay, so we're just gonna get rid of that thread. I wouldn't normally just plonk it down the bottom here, I would normally turn my work, but the fact that the camera's in the way I'm not going to turn the work. Okay, one more to go to complete another square. Another 100 stitches. Okay. Thread that up. I hope this well, I hope it helps for anyone that, I mean, to be honest, my videos are mainly aimed at people that have never done a heaven and earth design and are considering parking for the first time. You know, I would never advocate that I'm a pro because that's something that I'm definitely not. Okay, so again, we're going to anchor the thread and do our first stitch all in one. So go in the top right hand corner, 
because that's not my start leg. I leave the towel sitting up the fabric and then I bring my needle up where I would normally have my start leg like so and then I start to slowly tug. Bring that thread down so that it's just in line with the other stitches but still sitting there. I can still see that towel that's still wiggling about there. So then I go down till I feel a little bit of resistance. And then I come up. Again, feeling a little bit of resistance. Is ever look, you can see the thread goes tall but without actually pulling. And now I can't see because it's all dark. Oh, that's it there. And then we take our thread back down, give it a good tug, and everything's bouncing about. Perfect. We're done. One full square completed. So there you go, people. That's my um, my version of it um, and how I do it. Um, if anyone's got any questions, that it wasn't overly clear from what I was doing, how I do it. Um, feel free to leave comments as usual and I'll, uh, I'll answer you as best I can. Um, and again, one more square done. Nowhere to park. So I'll just plop that down there for now. And that's him gone. So there we go. And that's using obviously my Good Notes app. And that's how I do every heaven and earth, um, every full coverage. Um, and to be honest, even sometimes with the Mirabilia's, I will work. I will scan the scan the um, the chart in and load it straight into Good Notes um, and follow the chart that way, so that I can use the PDF reader. So there we go. I hope that helps everyone. Um, I'm going to go and have something to eat now because I'm absolutely starving. Well, that took longer than expected. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me if you're still here and you're right at the very end of this video. As you can see at last I've got my cup of coffee. Um, the recording of this video was far from the easiest. Um, and a few lessons learned. I will try and do some more videos if people want to see them about you know how I do my beading um, and how I actually do my stitching if there if it's of interest to anybody anybody that's got any you know questions feel free to ask me you know just leave a comment below or ping me on messenger you know for those that are connected to me on Facebook I hope it made sense because once I roll this all and edit this and roll it all into one, I have no idea how this is going to look and whether it's going to make sense to anyone else. But it makes total sense to me. So as long as it makes total sense to me, we're all good. So anyway, take care, have fun. Um, if you're going to attempt the parking method for the first time, then good luck. Not that you'll need it. Like I said, it's not about how I do it. It's not about how Caroline Mazio does it. It's not about how Pam Crafty Corner does it. Even if it meant that you took a little bit from me, a little bit from her, and a little bit from somebody else, and you rolled it all into one and you made it your own method, it's totally right. Totally right. It's What's right is what's right for you. So enjoy, have fun, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.